I'm Norma Jean Germond. Um, moved here to Oregon in 1969 and became involved with the Lake Moon Boaters in about 1970, I'd say, here. So I joined the local league, which is the Clackamas League, and became quite involved. But the first meeting that was at my house was a voter service on the ballot measures. And I thought, oh my gosh, all these women know all this information. I'll never understand, you know, whoa, they are so intelligent. I don't know about this. <laughs> and I was very impressed, very impressed. But I got involved, did an education study again, but this time knew how to do it. And then uh, an energy study, chaired that also, and met some wonderful women. A number of them are dead now, like Louise Fronville I adored, very special lady. I started a group called the Committee for the Conservation of Energy with another woman, Dolores Hurtado, who happened at that time to also be a league person. And we were very concerned that there was great interest in the utilities and Bonneville Power Administration to uh, uh, develop 20 nuclear power plants for the Pacific Northwest. And I thought, 20? I mean, that's going to bankrupt the Pacific Northwest. So I got very involved in uh, understanding Bonneville, how it works, and the whole thing, the whole river system, everything. So our Committee for the Conservation Energy had some very intelligent brilliant people with us and we learned a lot. We, uh, I ended up being the lobbyist for it in uh, Salem and I recall that Marion Frank from Eugene at the time was the environmental quality chair for the State League. I testified, she didn't really know me, but she listened to what I said and she went right back to Betty Mack, who at that time was state president, and said, you got to put her on the board. <laughs> Make her the environmental quality chair. And so Betty did. And that's how I got on the state board. And then as time went on the state board, that position became so broad with energy and environment quality that they split it ultimately. And then at some point, I, you know, I became the uh, state president. As league president, I was asked to do a lot of other things, and I became involved in a Northwest Conservation Act coalition, which really started in my living room. And so, so it became a very good organization concerned about electrical energy and its use, and it has perhaps over 100 organizations that are its members and I was its first chair and I'm a permanent member forever and it was a very valuable organization and it uh, had a tremendous effect on the Power Council. Now speaking of the Power Council, um, I was very concerned again about the bill that created the Power Council because it had in it an interesting clause that was called a guaranteed purchase that any utility that started to build something like a nuclear power plant, whether it was built or not, the folks, the ratepayers, would have to pay for it. And this was an objection that we legally could have as League of Women Voters and say, wait a minute, um, how about the stockholders? They should be paying for this, not just the ratepayers. So I had quite a bit of time with Senator Hatfield off and on a lot on this issue. And uh, the guaranteed purchase did remain in the bill, but the understanding, or let me say the emphasis that I and others put on this was energy conservation. Think in terms of using less energy. How do we conserve? That kind of thing. Now meanwhile, a committee for conservation energy that Dolores and I had created years ago. We put together a bill, and in this bill, 
had an advisory committee to the Public Utility Commission, and this was again before the Department of Energy of Oregon was created. In this bill, uh, there was to be a board of this committee, and Tom McCall was governor at the time, and he appointed me to this board. And so there were seven or eight other men and me. And so I used to tease Tom McCall and say, you know, I'm your token woman, Tom. <laughs> He said, oh, no, you're not, Mrs. Germont. <laughs> Developed a study uh, for the state of Oregon and uh, uh, a program, a plan, to uh, how to conserve energy for Oregon. So that was very interesting, great people on that board. Put together some conferences, and one very important conference I did was I met with a woman by the name of Polly Dyer, Polly worked at the University of Washington, and she was in their uh, environmental um, program. And I said, Polly, I went up to Seattle, met with Polly, and said, Polly, nobody knows anything about this Hanford reservation up here that's full of nuclear waste, that's very serious stuff, and the public isn't aware of this. We need to put together a big conference, and the trouble is the League of Women Voters doesn't have the money to do this. We need somebody to sponsor it, to fund it, and the whole thing, but we need to help put it together. And Polly said, I don't know. She'd better check with the University of Washington folks. So she did. She put together a committee of people, and they were the U.S. Department of Energy, big guys, big shots, and then a nuclear physicist, Maurice Robkin, who ran the nuclear reactor at the University of Washington, and one or two other people. And they met with me up again at the University of Washington, and they quizzed me. They grilled me because they thought I had an agenda that was going to be anti-nuclear. And I said, and, and really for hours, I had to really respond to their questions and say, look, the League of Women Voters is an educational organization, very much so, very strong. We feel that <clears throat> the people in this Pacific Northwest need to know about Hanford. They need to know what's going on up there. Um, they don't particularly have to be anti-nuclear or anything, but they need to know. There's an enormous amount of radioactive waste and chemical waste up there, and we need to put a conference together to tell folks about this, advertise the conference, <clears throat> have them come. And it was like a three-day conference. So <clears throat> um, they bought it. And they said, OK, we'll pay for it. But they were tough. <laughs> and I was delighted. So for a full year, <clears throat> I'd go up every month, meet with Polly, and we work out panels. And each panel would have a pro and a con. And the panels would be on all different possible issues relating to the res Hanford Reservation. Just an excellent conference. I was very proud of the work we did. Also, on awards, I've won uh, an award from the city of Lake Oswego as an outstanding um, citizen volunteer or uh, community activist. And Henry and I have won an award from a Lifetime Achievement Award from the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, it's a Bob Bigelow uh, Chamber Award, and that's a wonderful award, which surprised us. We thought, whoa. And we've also won the award from Portland Community College Foundation, because after I went 20 years off the regular board, they put me on the foundation. I said. <sighs> okay, so we're on the foundation, done a lot of work for them, for scholarships and so forth. Um, we got an award there. And then from the Willamette Women Democrats, uh, I've been their chair and won the Lifetime Achievement Award from them. And I mentioned the Oregon Community College Association, the Howard Cherry uh, award, which I'm very proud of, uh, because it's, uh, again, 
lobbyist for the Community College Association and um, did some things. I've got some other awards. Um, I remember the um, uh, uh, Girl Scout Award, which is another distinguished award, <coughs> and that was nice. What I'm trying to say is that the League of Women Voters opened a lot of avenues to me. Governors started appointing me to different things. We will always want a League of Women Voters. And I've won a few simple awards from the League, and I'm delighted and thrilled that I have received those because the League is very important to me. I'm not as involved now because it has put me into so many different branches of uh, energy that I need to devote time to, such as the Community College Foundation, the Hanford Advisory Board, and a few other things. So um, that's, I will continue to do that, you know. I can't stop. I'm, I'm just committed.